activity. After having an idea about what titrimetric analysis is in general, let us concentrate on redox titrations now. The word redox has been made from abbreviation spectra from the words reduction and oxidation. That is red stands for the reduction and ox stands for the oxidation. Now before talking about the redox titrations, let us revise some of the terms which have been commonly used earlier by you but which will now be more often used in this titrimetric analysis. The oxidation. Oxidation refers to loss of electrons whereas reduction refers to gain of electrons. An oxidizing agent is one which strips off the other species by picking up an electron from it and a reducing agent is one which reduces the other species by donating its own electrons. An oxidizing agent is also termed as oxidant and a reducing agent is also termed as a reductant. In general, we can represent an oxidation reaction as and a reductant losing n number of electrons getting converted into an oxidant. Now, whenever oxidation occurs, it always leads to the increase in the oxidation number of the redox active component, whereas the reduction always leads to the reduction in the, that is decrease in the oxidation number of the redox active com component of the uh, substance being analyzed. Now, whenever we have to compare the oxidizing and the reducing powers of the reagents, that can best be done by comparing their standard reduction potential values. Now, standard reduction potential values are enlisted in a table which has been termed as electrochemical series or electrode potential series in which the reduction potential data has been arranged in the order of decreasing potential values. The one with the most positive reduction potential values are placed like the top of the electrochemical reversible reaction, reaction potential oxygen series accepting and an electron the electron getting converted into a reductant. This expression gives us the uh, value of the reduction potential value for this system whenever an inert electrode would be dipped in a system containing both the oxidizing and the reducing agents. So Et is equal to E0 plus Rt by Nf log of oxid concentration of the oxidized form divided by concentration of the reduced form. Now, E T stands for the observed potential system of the redox system. R T and F are E not stands for the constants, which all of you know. M stands for the number of electrons exchanged in the reaction, and oxidized and reduction that refers to the concentration of the oxidized and reduced species in the system. Titration is basically involving a reaction between a reducing agent and an oxidizing agent, and to have a sharp uh, end point uh, for this titration, there should be a sufficiently large difference in the oxidizing and reducing powers of the reagents. So, so some of the commonly used oxidizing agents are potassium permanganate in acetic medium, potassium dichromate in acetic medium, and iodine solution. You can have a look at these slides. The uh, Equations represents what is the number of electron exchange in the slice. Say for example, permanganate in the acetic medium accepts five electrons and get converted into the manganous ions. The reduction potential value for the system is highly positive, 1.52 volt. That means it's a very strong oxidizing agent. Similarly, dichromate, it accepts six electrons in the oxidizer in the acetic medium and gets converted into chromium three ions and the reduction potential value is still highly positive but lower than the permanganate. So it is a good oxidizing agent but comparatively weaker than potassium permanganate and similarly iodine. Iodine iodide system in fact is one of the best system because it's a reversible system yes. and the reduction similarly potential some value of the lies commonly used in the middle of the electrochemical Mohor salt Mohor salt, the redox active component in Mohor salt is ferrous ions. Otherwise, it's a double salt, ferrous sulfate, ammonium sulfate with water molecules. During the uh, oxidation of this reducing agent, ferrous ions lose one electron to get converted into the ferric ion. Similarly, oxalic acid, oxalate ions are, it loses two electron to form carbon dioxide 
and in this way it is itself undergoing oxidation. Similarly, sodium thiosulfate, thiosulfate loses two electrons to get converted into tetrathionate ion. You can see the reduction potential values are somewhere comparable for more salt and oxalic acid, but much lower for the thiosulfate. Dependent as far as their Similarly, oxidizing some behavior of the is systems that are strongly based on such excellent example in this category. Potassium permanganate behaves as an oxidizing agent in all three mediums, acidic medium, alkaline medium, and in the neutral medium. Now you can have a look at this slide. This represents the reduction reactions for the permanganate in all the mediums. In the strongly alkaline medium, it accepts an electron and gets converted into manganate ion. The reduction potential value is plus 0.56 volt. Now, we, as discussed in the earlier section, we can find out the equivalent weight of the redox active species by dividing the molecular weight with the number of electrons exchanged. So here, since there is one electron exchange only, the equivalent weight of potassium permanganate will turn out to be same as the molecular weight if the reaction is to be concern, considered in the alkaline medium. However, in neutral medium, the number of electron exchange is different. Permanganate ion accepts three electrons and gets converted into a manganese dioxide, which will precipitate out from the reaction medium as a brown precipitate. And here, the equivalent weight of potassium permanganate has changed. This is now one-third of the molecular weight. The reduction potential value has increased, indicating the oxidizing strength is increasing. In the acidic medium, the maximum number of electrons are uh, accepted by permanganate ions to get converted into the manganese ions, and it has the maximum reduction potential value here with the best equivalent weight is one fifth of the molecular weight, only. And, and therefore, therefore potassiumetric analysis basically involves potassium permanganate in acetic medium. Now, whenever we talk about titration, we should have some criteria to judge the completion of the reaction, and that has already been discussed earlier in the section, that we have to choose a proper indicator, a proper auxiliary agent, which will help us in finding out when the reaction is complete or when the end point has reached. Similarly, for the redox titrations also, indicators are required. And for the redox titration, the indicator should be such that it should be redox active. It should itself be capable of undergoing the oxidation and the reduction reaction. And the oxidized and reduced form should have a sharp color contrast so as to judge the, to demarcate the end point easily and sharply. Okay. Just like we had seen for the earlier system, you can look at the slide. The reduction potential value for the uh, indicator can also be given in the same way. E is equal to E naught plus RT by NF log of concentration of the oxidized form of the indicator divided by concentration of the reduced form of the indicator. So since the indicator itself is redox active, that indicates that the indicator when present in the reaction medium, it produces sudden potential changes in the vicinity of the equivalence point. And in fact, that is the a property which is responsible for detecting or for helping us detecting the end point of the titration. Now, the redox indicators can be classified into various categories. We have a number of systems which can be used as indicators in the redox titrations, and these are self indicators, internal indicators, external indicators, and potentiometric methods. The self-indicators are those where uh, the titrant itself is so strongly colored that even a single drop of the titrant when added after the reaction is complete, it produces an intense color change in the reaction mixture. And in fact, that tells well that the reaction is complete, the reactant has been exhausted in the uh, container. Okay. For example, potassium permanganate is one such reagent which is so strongly colored that it produces a strong color change and helps in governing the end point. Similarly, internal indicators. Now, we have said that the indicators used in the redox titration should be redox active. So, when we are saying that they are redox active, it means they are capable of undergoing the oxidation and reductions. And internal indicators are such redox active indicators. 
they can be added into the reaction mixture. They produce potential changes within the reaction mixture by interacting with the titrant, which could be oxidizing or reducing agent, depending upon the system which, which we have chosen, and will therefore produce a different oxidized or reduced form of the indicator. Okay. Now, the indicator should be properly chosen. It should be so chosen that its potential should not be uh, higher than the analyte. The reduction potential value should always be lower than the analyte so that it is reacting with the titrant only once whole of the system has been exhausted. The diphenyl amine and N-phenyl anthranilic acid are such indicators, internal indicators which are used. Similarly, we have external indicators. Now, we may have certain systems where we find that the no suitable redox indicator is present. That is, we cannot add indicator which will give us either a sharp color change or a sharp potential change near the equivalence point. Then to judge the uh, end point in such titrations, we make use of a reagent which itself may not be redox active, but it will in a way chemically reacting with the reagent, which, could, uh, which is generally the reactant, the, uh, the uh, titrant. It reacts with the titrant producing certain chemical changes, which could be a precipitation, which could be a color change, or which could be any other visual change in the uh, property of the system and help us in analyzing the endpoint. Okay. Such indicators are called the uh, external indicators and their reactions are generally irreversible in nature. Potassium ferricyanide is one such indicator which is used in potassium diachromate versus Mohasol titration. And the best method to judge the equivalence point is the potentiometric method. Potentiometric methods involve the measurement of the EMF changes during the course of the redox titration. So that whenever there is a sudden and sharp change of the EMF at the equivalence point, the, the Plotting of the graph indicates it clearly that the equivalence point is reached and in fact this turns out to be the best method because it is helping us noting down the equivalence point and not the end point. As it has been indicated earlier, equivalence point is the ideal completion of the reaction point whereas the end point is a bit ahead of the equivalence point. Okay. Now let us talk specifically about the two titrations which we will discuss here. Potassium permanganate versus oxalic acid titration and potassium dichromate versus Mohasol titration. So we will be actually making use of the two reagents, two oxidizing agents, potassium permanganate and potassium dichromate. Potassium permanganate is not a primary standard and a lot of reasons are attributed to it. Number one, it is not available in sufficient purity. But it is most of the times contaminated with manganese dioxide, which is the product of the decomposition of potassium permanganate. Not only in the solid state, but also the aqueous solutions are unstable. They, they are decomposed by even the traces amount of the uh, organic matter which might be present in the distilled water also. Uh, producing the precipitate of manganese dioxide, a brown precipitation is generally observed and this reaction is catalyzed by light. The precipitation of manganese dioxide is further undesirable as it leads to further decomposition, catalyzed decomposition of potassium permanganate, uh, producing more of the manganese dioxide. Even the manganese ions which are produced during the course of the titration, they also catalyze the decomposition of potassium permanganate if the acidity of the medium is not sufficiently high. So, uh, since enough, neither the solid state nor the aqua solution of the potassium permanganate, that means we cannot prepare a standard solution of potassium permanganate by simply weighing out a known quantity of it and dissolving it in known solvent, uh, in a known volume of the solvent, because concentrations would always be different. The active component is actually different. Therefore, once the standard, uh, the aqua solutions of potassium permanganate are prepared, they need to be standardized with the help of a primary standard solution. And for preparing the aqua solution of uh, uh, potassium permanganate, again certain precautions are taken. If the aqua solution has been prepared, it has to be left for one uh, or two more days so that any manganese dioxide which is precipitating out or any organic matter which is present there as an impurity is exhausted or if uh, an immediate need of the potassium permanganate solution is needed, the solution is boiled for at least one hour and then cooled down. 
In both the cases, however, the final solution has to be filtered through a centered glass crucible, that is, filtering medium should be non reducible in nature, and the filtered clear solution is then standardized against a primary standard solution. Now you can look at this slide. This represents the titration reactions involved in the uh, reduction of the potassium permanganate. That is when it itself is acting as an oxidizing agent. This reaction we had dealt just now also where the permanganate is being reduced to the manganese ions. Manganese ions are colorless. Okay. And uh, the acidic medium is required because we have seen that the number of electron exchange is maximum in the acidic medium. This acidity is created in the medium with the help of dilute sulfuric acid only. We cannot make use of any other mineral acid present in the lab. And that is because the other mineral acids which are available in the lab like conch sulfuric acid, dilute nitric acid, conch nitric acid, these are oxidizing in nature. And when they are oxidizing in nature, that uh, clearly indicates that they will be interfering in the oxidizing behavior of potassium permanganate, introducing a large error in the titrations. Acetic acid is not an oxidizing acid, but still it cannot be used because it is such a weak acid that it cannot create the desired acidity in the medium. The other mineral acid which is commonly available in the uh, lab is hydrochloric acid, HCl, but this is also ineligible for uh, use in the potassium permanganate titrations because look at the reduction potential value of the chlorine chloride system, it is 1.36 volt. Okay. This is a strong reducing agent and therefore permanganate will react with the acid at it in the medium, converting it to the chlorine gas itself undergoing reduction to magnesium. ions. So you can see this again becomes a competitive reaction, a source of error in our main reaction of potassium permanganate with the reducing agent. Okay. This slide gives us the detailed equations of what happens when potassium permanganate is titrated with oxalic acid. Potassium permanganate reacts with oxalic acid. To produce manganese sulfate in the acetic medium, potassium sulfate, carbon dioxide and water. Now the same equation now can be written in the ionic form also where we are just picking up the redox active ions in the compounds, permanganate oxalate in the acetic medium. And you can see the, this main ionic equation can be further split apart into two sub-reactions, reduction separately and oxidation separately. The oxidizing agent which is potassium permanganate is being reduced here. The oxidation number of the manganese has decreased from plus 7 to, that's why it's a reduction and this goes with our earlier statement that an oxidizing agent undergoes a self-reduction. Similarly, oxalate ions coming from the oxalic acid here are the reducing agents. They are converted into carbon dioxide and the oxidation number has increased from plus 2 to plus 4. That is, the reducing agent has undergone a self-oxidation. Now, the electron exchange here is and 5 electrons for the 2 electrons for 1 uh, mole of oxygen. magnet. Now, this reaction conditions which are required here for the titration of potassium permanganate with the oxalic acid is that the reaction has to be done under warm conditions. That is, temperature should be somewhere near 60 degrees Celsius. Now, this temperature is required because you can see in the equation that this uh, reaction between the permanganate and the oxalate is a reversible reaction and the product carbon dioxide which is formed here in this reaction is highly water soluble. The solubility in the water that is not desirable here because this equilibrium reaction will be driven in the forward direction if carbon dioxide could be escaped out and that can be done easily by warming the reaction mixture. Secondly, there is one more source of error in this titration and that is the reduction of permanganate may not always take place to manganese ions if the reaction temperature is low. At low temperatures, manganese 3 is generated which gets stabilized in the presence of excess of oxalate ions present in the reaction mixture to form tris oxalato manganese 3 complex. Now this complex is again an undesirable product because this is leading to a different number of electron exchange in the 
reaction again an error will be introduced in the titration heating however decomposes this product form and therefore that source of error is minimized so similarly the next important oxidizing agent which we talk about is potassium dichromate potassium dichromate has a very high positive reduction potential value indicating it's a very strong oxidizing agent but as indicated earlier it's slightly weaker than the potassium permanganate in spite of its weakness over potassium permanganate this is a comparatively preferred oxidizing agent because of several advantages it is available in high purity uh, potassium permanganate it, uh, and one. the com the compound in the solid state is stable up to its melting point okay aqueous solutions are also stable unlike potassium permanganate solutions they are unaffected by the trace organic impurities if they are present in the distilled water and the aqueous solutions are stable towards light also okay so potassium dichromate therefore gets a weightage over potassium permanganate now again like we had discussed that the oxidizing behavior of any reagent is quite dependent upon the ph of the reaction medium the same is observed here in case of potassium dichromate also potassium dichromate is a strong oxidizing agent in acidic medium only now what happens if the medium is not sufficiently acidic or say if it is just a neutral aqueous solution of potassium dichromate the neutral aqueous solution of potassium dichromate actually exists as one is to one mixture of dichromate and chromate ions the chromate ions are produced as a result of the hydrolysis of the dichromate ions the chromate ions are yellow in color and dichromate are orange in color so you can actually visually also note the difference in the color of the acidic solution and the color of the neutral solution now what problem does chromate ion pose, uh, pose in the oxidizing behavior of dichromate chromate ions are not as strong oxidizing agents as dichromate are and therefore the oxidizing strength of the potassium dichromate is reduced in the neutral medium but as indicated from the equation this equation can be reversed if sufficient acidity is there in the medium okay because the presence of protons on the right hand side will shift this equation in the backward direction and that explains what is the need of the uh, what is the necessity of the acidic medium in this titration now when we are titrating with potassium dichromate with mohr salt potassium dichromate always undergoes reduction to the chromium ions okay chromium ions are green in color dichromate one mole of dichromate will accept six electrons to form chromium 3 ions high positive reduction potential value and as we have just now and discuss acidity is must for this the re reduction reaction the medium can be acidified using dilute sulfuric acid only okay uh, conk sulfuric acid conk nitric acid or dilute nitric acid cannot be utilized for the same reasons which we had given for potassium permanganate however there is a little difference here compared to potassium permanganate so unlike potassium permanganate here hcl can be used even in the concentrated form to acidify the medium provide it the concentration the other, uh, does not increase reagent which we are utilizing in this titration is the mohr salt mohr salt will be reducing agent here as indicated earlier it's a double salt and the redox active component in this double salt is the ferrous ions so ferrous ions they lose one electron to form the ferric ions the reduction potential value is 0.77 volts here and mohr salt is actually a primary standard its composition is fixed its aqueous solutions are, are stable in the presence of acid now this is to be noted aqueous solutions are stable in the presence of acid only why they are stable in the presence of acid because the neutral aqueous solutions which are containing hexa aqua ions they are prone to hydrolysis of the transition metal because all of us know that the transition metal ions are highly polarizing in nature and they tend to polarize the coordinated water molecules so in this hexa aqua ion ferrous ion polarizes the coordinated water molecules 
producing an intermediate monohydroxy species and in case the hydrolysis increases beyond a certain point we may even observe the precipitation of uh, brown precipitation of ferrous hydroxide and once this is taken out uh, it, this is precipitated this is removing one of our reactants from the reaction mixture and the quantitative exercise is of no meaning. So to revert back this equation, you can see the protons are there on the right hand side. So this have to be present sufficiently large concentration of hydrogen under ion solution so that of reaction the can be reversed salt. We take a and precaution that's why that by preparing this all the moho salt in a small amount of water and then immediately add few drops of either clonk sulfuric acid or say one ml of dilute sulfuric acid to maintain sufficient acidity in the medium and then make up the volume till they mark. Now moho salt is consisting of ferrous sulfate. Ferrous sulfate otherwise is also available as such in the labs and therefore it should also be used because that is the redox factor. component but however this is not used as a primary standard because ferrous sulfate contains a large amount of ferric even in this composition is never accurate and composition is never accurate we cannot make it uh, its use as a primary standard okay. now this slide represents the reactions between In the potassium dichromate and the uh, mohor salt, the dichromate, the molecular equation states that for every mole of potassium dichromate, six moles of ferrous sulfates are used. And in the ionic equation, this is more clear. When we are splitting the ionic equation into the reduction and the oxidation reactions, dichromate, each mole is requiring six electrons to undergo reduction to chromium-3. Whereas each mole of ferrous ion require one electron. So to have the electron balance, each mole of dichromate will require six moles of the ferrous ions for the complete electron exchange. So oxidation number of ferrous has increased plus two to plus three and oxidation number of the oxidizing agent has decreased from plus six to uh, plus three. Now one thing which is uh, clear from here is that uh, in this type re reaction, the chromium three is uh, green in color. The product which is generated is green in color and if uh, uh, we have said earlier that the intrinsic colors color are the one the where uh, the dichromate is strongly colored. If you are adding a drop of the dichromate to a colorless solution, a sufficiently intense yellow coloration would appear. But still we are not able to make use of dichromate as a self indicator because for dichromate uh, the reduction product is colored. Chromium-3 ions are green in color and it is difficult uh, to observe when in the green solution the yellow tinge has appeared. So rather than making use of the potassium dichromate as a self indicator, we will make use of a redox active indicator here and the one which is most commonly used redox active indicator is diphenylamine in presence of phosphoric acid. Now what is the need of this phosphoric acid? We already have sufficiently acidic medium by the addition of sulfuric acid there. So what role is this phosphoric acid playing? Now if you look at the electrode potential values of the diphenylamine ferric ferrous systems, we will see here that the reduction potential values of the titrin, that is ferric ferrous system, is very close to the indicator system, which is 0.76 volt. Okay. Now, we have stated earlier that the redox indicator should be such that once it is uh, introduced into the reaction mixture, it should not interfere in the reduction oxidation reaction of the titrin. Okay. But since the values are close here, so somehow we have to prevent this interference from the diphenylamine. Okay. The phosphoric acid, added phosphoric acid serves this purpose. It complexes the product ferric ions which are generated by the oxidation of the ferrous ions and that uh, product is the uh, ferrous ferric hydrophosphate complex. This is a stable complex and is removing ferric ions from the solution. And if you go by the electrode potential uh, value expression, the ferric ions are present in the numerator and ferrous ions are present in the denominator. So decrease in the concentration of ferric ions lead to lowering the formal potential of the ferric ferrous system, making it a much stronger reducing agent compared to diphenylamine so that no interference from the indicator is observed. 
Okay. Now this diphenylamine actually acts uh, by uh, self oxidation reactions with the diphenylamine undergoes oxidation first to diphenylbenzidine and this diphenylbenzidine form is the colorless form which further undergoes conversion to the blue violet form. Okay. So endpoint is marked by a sudden color change from the light green color which is originally due to the production of chromium 3 ions to a blue violet color which is the oxidized form of the indicator. Okay. This diphenylamine is the uh, internal indicator which we had talked about. Many a times then, then we can make use of the external indicator also internal internal and potassium dichromate mohair salt again can be taken as an example where we can make use of an external indicator which is potassium ferricyanide. Okay. Potassium ferricyanide here is con consisting of iron in plus 3 oxidation state. This is also termed as potassium hexacyanofarate. This potassium hexacyanofarate, it gives the hexacyanofarate ions, that is the ferricyanide ion, which will react with the reactant, mind it. This is the reactant reacting with the indicator. A chemical reaction which is irreversible here because this is leading to the production of potassium ferro ferricyanide which is also turnbull blue. So a turnbull blue a shade is similar to the Prussian blue. Prussian blue colored precipitate will be observed. Now since the indicator is leading to precipitation of the reactant, this indicator cannot be added into the reaction class. This has to be done and uh, the reaction has to be done uh, in the medium outside the uh, overall uh, reaction medium and for that we take the indicator on a grooved tile. Grooved tile has certain grooves made over it, uh, depressions over it on which we take the drop of the indicator and during the course of the titration we take a drop out and put it on the indicator and see the color change. When all the ferrous ions would be exhausted from the reaction mixture, the Prussian blue coloration will not be obtained and therefore that will indicate the completion of the titration. But you can see here, at every instant we are taking out a small minute drop of the indicators are all losing that quantity in the reaction of ferrous. But anyhow, so the use of when no other suitable indicator is available, this at least help us in finding out the near about concentrations of the solutions. Okay. Now once we have gone through what is actually happening as far as chemistry is concerned in these titrations, now let us see how these titrations would be actually done. For that these titrations would be double titrations. Double titration means we will make use of one titrant which would be common to two titrations. One would be the, if we have to say find out the strength of a given solution, we will titrate that given reducing agent with the oxidizing agent and we will find out the oxidizing, uh, the strength of the oxidizing agent by further titrating it with a standard solution whose concentration is known to us. So there will be basically three steps in the overall procedure. First step would be the preparation of the standard solution of Mohair salt or oxalic acid as when required. Second step would be the standardization of the oxidizing agent, potassium dichromate or potassium permanganate by titrating it with the standard solution of the reducing agent which would be the Mohair salt or oxalic acid depending upon the type of titration. And then third titration would be the titration of this standardized oxidizing agent with the given solution of the reducing agent whose concentration is to be determined. Okay, And for that we should know how to calculate first the amount which is required to prepare the standard solution of a reducing agent. Say for example, if we have to prepare the standard solution of Mohair salt whose normality has to be kept roughly n by 40, then we can utilize the formula where strength is equated with to normality into equivalent volt equivalent weight. This has already been discussed in the earlier section and you know now how to reach to this expression. So normality which is required is 1 by 40 and the equivalent weight of Mohair salt is seen as the uh, more, uh, it's a molecular weight because it involves only one electron exchange that is 392. So multiplying the two quantities will give us 9.80 grams per liter of the strength. Now this is per liter. We don't need that much quantity of the solution in our titrations that would be first rate of the chemicals. What we need is just 100 ml uh, uh, 
solution and therefore we will prepare only that much amount. So for 100 ml, 0.98 grams of mohair salt would be required for the titration. Now, how you have to record the data? Once you have prepared the standard solution, but that standard solution's concentration has to be known to us. Okay, so that uh, that concentration would be known to us provided we are recording each data. Okay, and for that, the weighing observations have to be recorded very carefully. You'll, as demonstrated later on, uh, as it will be demonstrated later on in the how to weigh a compound. These, you should keep into mind that these observations have to be recorded. Weight of the empty weighing bottle, weight of the weighing bottle, with the mohair salt or any, any compound which is to be weighed and the weight of weighing bottle after transference of mohair salt to the standard solution. Okay. Once the, um, all three weights have been taken, the differences of the third and the second weight will give us the actual amount of the mohair salt which has been transferred, which will be done. You have to mention at the top of each uh, table that what is the volume of mohair salt solution you are utilizing, what is the indicator you are utilizing, and what should be the color change you are observing. So we'll be utilize, okay. You will be doing now, the titration by the procedural part is concerned of the reaction mixture into the flask, adding the uh, required acid, requisite amount of the acid, which is 10 ml of the dilute sulfuric acid, and the for potassium dichromate. Uh, mohair salt titration. To the reaction mixture you will add indicator diphenylamine and 2 ml of phosphoric acid. Okay, That has already been indicated in the uh, uh, theory part that uh, why phosphoric acid is required and you will titrate this reaction mixture with the oxidizing agent till you observe the desired color change. Okay. Now once you have noted down all the readings, you have to do the calculations by applying the normality concept. Now normality concept has already been uh, told to you in detail how you have reached this formula that normality of mohair salt multiplied by volume of mohair salt will give you the normality of dichromate into volume of dichromate. So by equating these, the putting up the parameters which are known to you, which is the uh, normality of the standard Mohr salt solution, Nm, and the volume of the standard Mohr salt solution, which has been utilized in the titration, dividing it by the volume of dichromate solution, which is the dual trading which we have got, will give you the normality of this intermediate oxidizing agent, which is the dichromate here. Similar calculations can be done for your potassium permanganate versus oxalic acid titration. Similarly, the second titration will involve the titration with a solution of unknown strength. Same way it has to be recorded. And now you will be calculating the normality of potassium, uh, sorry, mohair salt rather than potassium dichromate. Okay. Once normality has been calculated, you will find out the strength of the given solution by multiplying normality with the equivalent weight or in case you have more the molarity concept by you the multiplying molarity with the molarity was found to be much quantity in grams per liter. Okay. That's all.